Hi, I'm Sarah Delaney with One Big Happy Yarn Company. Thank you for joining me for the Misty Mountain Set Knit Along. Um, I know usually you're used to seeing me with crochet alongs, but I do also knit. And I am so excited to show you the special stitch in this set. Um, we are gonna start with the mittens in this set, and I'm gonna show you the special slipped cross stitch that looks almost like a cable, but totally isn't, so you don't need any extra tools for it. Um, so materials for this set. You um, can stop by One Big Happy and pick up a kit, uh, or you can click the link in the description below to grab a kit for this set. Um, there are two options. There is the um, Rowan Tweed Haze, which is this fantastic mix of mohair and alpaca with this little thread that runs through it. It's sort of like a kind of chunky version of like a Kid Silk Haze yarn. Lots of great fuzz and halo to it. It's so soft and fluffy and squishy. Um, and then the other option is the Cantata yarn from uh, Cascade. Now this is an I-cord yarn, so it's a tube. And that tube is made out of a cotton thread and then they blow merino wool into it. So it also has like this little halo of fuzz and it's soft and it's lightweight, but it's super warm. And so that's the idea with both of the yarns for this set is that they are lightweight, meaning they're not very heavy and they're not very dense, but they are very, very warm because of the halo of the yarn, because of all of those extra fuzzies around the outside of the yarn. Lots of extra air gets trapped inside these stitches. And so it doesn't have to be a super dense knit. It's really lightweight, but you're gonna be very, very warm in these. Uh, and the slipped cross stitches run up both sides of the mitten along the edges. And this is more of like a, a Nordic or Norwegian shaped mitten where it has a pointed top and the thumb actually comes from the palm of the mitten rather than having a gusset out to the side. And I know when you when you first look at these, it's like, that's not where my thumb is. That Like, that's not where my thumb is, but it is where your thumb is. <laughs> it really is. It works just fine. Um, so um, that's the yarn. You will need double pointed needles for the mittens. You'll need um, a circular needle for the cowl that we'll make in the next episode. And that's in a size six. So this is worsted weight yarn, but we're knitting on a slightly smaller needle just to sort of pack those stitches in a little bit more densely. Um, but it's not super dense and stiff fabric. You'll need scissors, you'll need stitch markers, um, a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Um, the cantata comes in a hank, so you'll need to wind it into a ball. You can either use uh, an umbrella swift um, or the back of a chair or the hands of a friend so they can hold on to that open hank for you like this. So it comes in a twisted hank, which opens up into a big loop. And then it is held in place. There's another little tie underneath the label here, but you can see that it's tied right there. Don't undo those ties until you have this secured under just a little bit of tension so that it doesn't get tangled. And then you just wind from this big open loop. The Rowan yarn comes in a ball. So you just pop the label off. The end will be right out there on the outside of the ball and you just start working from the outside of the ball. You don't want to try and work from the inside with either of these yarns. Um, if you wind it onto a ball winder, don't work from the inside. That fuzz likes to hold on to itself and you're going to end up pulling out clumps and getting tangled. So you want to work from the outside. Um, my samples that I'm going to work on with you today, I'm working in the cantata and I just wound it into a hand wound ball and now I don't want that to roll all over my table so I'm just gonna pop it into my little um, my little pot right there I'm gonna use that as a yarn bowl and that'll keep it from rolling around so you can have like fancy little yarn bowls but you can also use just like a pretty pot that you pick up at your favorite department store all right are you ready to get started <laughs> we are gonna cast on 36 stitches so I'm gonna pull about a yard of yarn and using my double pointed needles, I'm gonna cast 12 stitches onto my first needle. Now I'm just using a long tail cast on and I'm doing it fairly lightly. I'm not tugging those stitches tight. I'm just snugging them up under the underside of the needle. If you need a little bit of practice with the long tail cast on, we do have a stitch support video. We'll put the link up above for you. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 
Now these are bamboo needles from Clover that I'm using, but if you have metal needles or plastic needles, you can certainly use those. On this second needle, I'm gonna cast on 14 stitches. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then on the final needle, I'm gonna cast on 10 stitches. Now, if you um, prefer to work with Magic Loop, which you totally can do, um, then just split that 36 in half and do 18 and 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, and then I've got a short little tail there, but little tails drive me crazy, so I always end up winding them into these teeny tiny little butterflies just so that they stay out of my way. I'm like silly about it. Like every knit project that I have has this silly little butterfly of the tail. And that's, the, it also helps me to keep from working with that tail. All right, now I'm going to be knitting in the round. So I wanna make sure that I get all my stitches lined up so there's no twist to any of them. That, that the bottom ridge of those stitches goes straight across and then I'm going to bring that end around to where I just finished up. Okay, so I've brought that very first stitch that I cast on around to this last one that I just cast on. Now I'm gonna grab my next needle because you're gonna work the stitches from this left hand needle onto the one in your right hand. But I don't wanna just start knitting because I'm gonna end up with a gap here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is twist these two stitches. So to do that, I'm gonna slip that last stitch over here to the left hand side. And then I'm gonna go into both of these stitches as if I was gonna knit them together and then just let them slip over to my right hand needle. And then I'm gonna pick up that first one and put it back on my left needle. So now you can see that they've switched needles. That's gonna close up the gap that often happens between the end of your cast on and the beginning of your cast on and the beginning of the first row. And now I'm ready to start working needle one and I am going to purl the first two stitches. So I'm gonna go into that stitch and purl one and purl two. Now I'm just gonna give the yarn a tug and then I'm gonna reseat my needles, make sure everybody's sitting in the right place. It, it always feels funny when you start a project on double pointed needles. My husband used to call this porcupine knitting. The key to this work is these two needles don't exist. They never exist. You are only ever working with the needle that's in your left hand and the needle that's in your right hand. The other two are just stitch holders. So you will find a rhythm with how you place them as you move around that works well for your hands. All right, we've knit two, now we're, uh, we've purled two, now we're gonna knit four. Then we're gonna purl another two. So those four stitches are where our slipped cross stitches are gonna live that look like cables um, when we get to those. So these eight stitches, the purl two, the knit four, the purl two, is where those crossed slip stitches are gonna happen. The rest of the mitten is the cuff is a knit two purl two. So now we're gonna work in two by two ribbing. We're gonna knit two, purl two, then we're gonna switch needles. That needle is empty now. It's gonna to go to my right hand. We finished with a purl two. So we're gonna start here with a knit two, purl two, knit two more. Then we're gonna place a marker because this is where our repeat happens. So from here, we're gonna repeat everything that we've just, that, that we've done already. We're gonna purl two, we're gonna knit four, we're 
we're going to purl two more. So this is why if you're working on double points, you put 14 on that middle needle because otherwise this eight section repeat of our um, slipped cross stitches would have been split across two needles. Now we've got 10 stitches left in two by two ribbing that starts with knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two. And then that will get us back to the beginning of our round. The last stitch is the one that we brought over from the other needle to close up the gap. And then there's our little tail. She can live down here. And so now you can see that there's, there's no gap here because we crossed those two stitches at the beginning. All right, so you are gonna do one more round of exactly what we just did. And then I will show you the slipped cross stitches for the first time. All right, now we're ready for the first row of the slipped cross stitches. It, it's a two row process. So around in this case. So we're gonna purl those first two stitches. And then we're gonna leave our yarn in the front because the pattern is yarn over knit one, yarn over knit one across these four knit stitches. So we just came off a purl. If we leave this yarn in the front and then knit the next stitch, it creates that yarn over for us. So there's our yarn over knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, and then we are back to our two by two ribbing after the, the purl two at that side. So we're gonna do this again on the other side um, where our repeat is. Let me get over there and I'll show it to you. This becomes sort of second nature over the course of this project. Um, <laughs> and you might find yourself coming off a random pearl too and diving into this and being like, wait, 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 no, that's not the right row. All right, so here we are again. I'm gonna pearl two. I'm gonna leave that yarn in front and go right into a knit one because that created the yarn over for us. Then I'm gonna yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit one, purl two, and then back to my two by two ribbing across needle three. And then we get to do the fun part. And we get back to the beginning of the round and we start round four is like my favorite part of this pattern. This is where we do the slipped cross. And I just, it's so neat. I just, I found it in a stitch dictionary and I fell in love with it. Okay, round four. We start with that purl two. One, two. Bring your yarn to the back. Now we've got these yarn overs. We're gonna drop them. So we're gonna drop that first yarn over, pick up the first stitch. Drop that second yarn over, pick up the second stitch. Drop the third pick up the third, drop the fourth, pick up the fourth. And now I like to give these a nice tug and lengthen them out. See how much longer that made them? And it really pulled those yarn overs out. This is the fun part. I'm now gonna use my left hand needle to pick up the farthest to the right two stitches. And I'm keeping my finger on these first two stitches. I'm gonna lift these up and over, almost like I'm binding off and then I'm gonna wiggle them, and then I'm gonna take these two stitches and also put them on my left-hand needle, but I'm keeping the tip of my thumb just in between them so they stay as two separate groups, and then we're gonna knit these four stitches. One, two, and I can take my thumb off, three, and four. And that's that slipped cross that you can see right here. It's so neat. All right, let's work our way. We'll finish that chart. There's the two. We'll do our two by two ribbing over 10 stitches and get over to the other repeat and I'll show it to you one more time. All right, here we are again. I'm gonna drop that yarn over, grab the first stitch. Drop the second yarn over, grab the stitch. Third, fourth, there's the fourth stitch. I give them all a tug and lengthen them out. 
I hold on to those first two stitches, lift those second two stitches up and over like you're binding off, wiggle them through, put these on the left needle, and then knit all four. One, two, three, four, and then our knit two to finish that needle, or our purl two to finish that needle. And that's the slipped cross stitches. They're so pretty. All right, you're gonna finish round four, which is your two by two ribbing. And then you're gonna do four rounds where you work even. So it's a six row repeat. So there are six round, or four rounds where you're just doing what you see. If you see a knit stitch, knit the stitch. If you see a purl stitch, purl the stitch. Essentially, you're repeating round one four times. Then you'll do the round with the yarn overs. Then you'll do the round where you create the crossed slip stitches. And that's it. We are gonna repeat that, those six rows, three more times. That's our cuff. Meet me back here and I'll show you what we do after the cuff. Okay, so you've worked that cuff where you've got one, two, three of those cable crosses. What do you do, or the slipped crosses, what do you do after that? So mine only has that first repeat, because I'm just working on a sample for you here. So when you come off of that last um, cross slip stitch repeat, you're gonna move into the body of the mitten and off of the cuff. So we're gonna keep this eight stitch section repeating. So the, the slipped cross stitches are gonna repeat all the way up. So these eight stitches, the purl two, those four knits that we cross at some point, and the other purl, the other purl two, those stay the same all the way up and keep repeating. But the other stitches between these sections change now to where we're just gonna be working in stockinette stitch. So there's our eight stitches. Then from here, we had 10 stitches in that two by two ribbing. They're all knit stitches now. This section starts to fly because all of these stitches are knit. You don't have to worry about switching back and forth between your knits and your purls. They're all knit stitches. Then we're back to that stitch marker. So we're back to our eight stitch crossed slip, slip cross section. Although I just finished the cross, so they're just knit stitches. This is essentially a row one. Two more purls. And then that third needle, you just knit your way across. So you're going to do this for a while with the uh, 10 stitches between your slipped cross stitches, your crossed slip stitches. I'm going to keep saying that backwards. <laughs> um, those 10 stitches knit and you're gonna do three more repeats of your six row pattern for your slipped cross stitches, cross slip stitches. Um, so 18 more rows, and then we're gonna put in an afterthought thumb. So work those rounds, and then meet me back here, and we'll put in that thumb. Okay, so once you've knit those 18 rounds, or Maybe you have a super short hand. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna put the section that you've worked on your hand. This is part of why I like double points here. Let's stretch those stitches out over those three needles and slip your hand in there. I don't have dainty little hands, so if I can get my hand through here, you can get your hand through here. Essentially what you wanna do is you wanna knit enough, your ribbing, all that two by two ribbing that we did should stop right here before your thumb flares out from your palm, okay? And then you're gonna work the stockinette se section until right where your thumb separates from your hand. So your work should be coming to like right there when you're ready to put the thumb in. So let's do that, let's put that thumb in. And it is the most ridiculously easy thing, I promise you. So we're gonna work our eight, set, our eight stitch repeat for the crossed slipped stitches. Um, and you'll, you should be on a row one of the pattern. 
and then you'd get into your 10 stitches of stockinette. What I'm gonna do is grab some scrap yarn. Doesn't matter what weight it is, doesn't matter what color it is, you just want something that's smooth and not super fuzzy because we're gonna take these stitches out later and it's easier to take out if they are smooth and not fuzzy. And I'm gonna knit with this scrap yarn. And I'm gonna knit five stitches, one, that's two, three, four, and then I need one more stitch off of this needle. So I'm just gonna knit that fifth stitch here. And then readjust my stitches. All right, see those five stitches? Now you're gonna take your empty needle and you're gonna slip these five stitches back on to an empty left-hand needle. Just like that. And then you're going to pretend that you did not just knit those five stitches with scrap yarn. <laughs> and you're gonna knit through those with your regular yarn and keep going. And then on to the next needle, those five, three, four, five, and then back into your cross slip stitch pattern on the other side. So you can see those here. They live there. They're sort of leggy. You can use a brighter color or a different color if it's easier for you to find them, but I, it doesn't really matter to me. I literally just grabbed yarn out of my scrap pile and you'll be able to find it because you'll have the tails. Now I like to tuck those down inside so they're out of the way because we're not going to do anything else with this thumb until we've finished the rest of the mitten. So then you're going to continue just as you did for those 18 rows until you got to the thumb. You're going to keep going for the number of rows laid out in the pattern until you get to where the mitten hits the top of your pinky. And then we're going to start to decrease for the top, which we will make in the second episode. So thank you for joining me for the Misty Mountain Mittens. If you haven't yet, make sure that you stop by OneBigHappy.com to pick up a kit, or you can click the link down in our description below. I look forward to seeing you in the second episode to finish up this set. Happy knitting!